Sanilia. Those are the oil pastels I'm working in. Now, I have only used before this set, the student grade oil pastels, and there was definitely a difference. Now, that's not to say I never enjoyed the, the student grade oil pastels, I actually did, but they're a more firm, I guess, that not, not difficult level hard, the other type of hard. These are really soft. And again, if, if you've got the student grade, go with those too, that's, they're still fun. The paper that I'm gonna be working on, this is the oil pastel pad by Sanilia, Sanilia never gonna get that right. And it's actually really nice. I'd never used this before either. Really any of the smoother mixed media papers, as long as it's a cardstock and thicker, I've always liked those with the oil pastels. 160 pounds, so it is a thicker paper, but more of your cardstock type. And the thing that I really liked, it's got, it looks like glassine. They listed it as just a crystal insert, but it, it's like glassine in between each page. Super nice, definitely. I will be buying this again. And after having worked on it, I did really enjoy it. The I'm using are listed in the video description. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about, I had never used a fixative on my oil pastels before. One of the complaints that I'd had is it seemed like the oil pastels I used in the past would take months to sort of set, but they never dry all the way. They're just always kind of, just always soft. So if you were to run your hand across it, it would smudge. I did this piece this week and look, nothing, no smudging because I used the fixative, the, and it's still the Sennelier. I sound like an idiot every time I say that. This fixative on it, oh my gosh, it gave it kind of a slight sheen. Yeah, you can see it there. A little bit of a gloss there. It hardened it right away. Like, it, it's just amazing to me that I can touch this and I'm not messing anything up. That has not been my experience with oil pastels in the past. The only way, because I was testing how much I could mess it up, was to take my fingernail and scrape it. I could kind of scrape a little off, but as far as like lightly touching it, nothing was coming off. So, and that was always one of my biggest complaints with oil pastels. Problem solved, turned out I just needed to use the proper tools. Funny how that works, isn't it? So those are the materials that I'm going to be using tonight along with odorless mineral spirits for blending. We are going to start by just sketching this out. We're gonna go, I'm gonna grab the, the peach color. See, even when I touch this, like it already comes off. It's so soft, it comes off on my finger really easily. And the student grade ones, I don't know what brand I had used in the past, but it's been years since I really used these much. But the one that I used in the past, you could touch it and it wasn't really coming off. These are very, very buttery. So let's go ahead and start. And I'm gonna just start by sketching everything out where I want it. So I'm going to pull up, just lightly sketch in about where I want my clouds. To get the circle, I'm just gonna take the cap off my fixative, put that where I want it. This is gonna be my moon. So there's my general drawing. I've got my moon, I've got my clouds, and now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my background first. I'm going to choose a dark, you can see all the colors I have here. This is a huge set. You do not need this big of a set. They mix and blend very well. So if you're thinking about getting these, you can get the smaller set to get a feel for them and see if you like them. I would say probably pick up an extra white. That one I can tell is when I'm gonna go through extra fast. Let's go with the whatever charcoal blue. Now you can see these little angles right here I have. That is just to let me know that that is where my mat fits. So I need to make sure I'm going wider than that. So I don't have to go all the way to the black tape, but I need to go outside of those two angles to make sure that it covers. I probably will go all the way to the tape anyway. But these I found that you go through fairly quick. I mean, you can see I've already burned through a decent amount just in that amount of time. They're really soft. You do not need to push hard to get decent coverage. And I'm gonna be blending with OMS, but you can blend, they have a colorless blender you can go with. You can blend just with Q-tips or a paper towel. There's so, you can use your finger to blend. There are so many different ways. I don't like using my hands that much because some, and I haven't researched theirs, but I know some ha still use different pigments that are not super non-toxic. So I try to keep my hands off. Plus, as we all know, people juice is not archival. So I'd like to keep the oils of my hands off as much as possible. In this case, I don't think some, some of your hands touch, like any, if you did have some of the oils from your skin getting on it, there's enough coverage here. You're not really gonna have too big of an issue, but ideally I still like to keep my hands off it as much as I can. Plus I like my hands to stay clean because I'm a little bit neurotic. Now notice I'm not layering this to where, like anywhere I want the pink clouds, I'm not pulling the blue away into that because the pink, you're not gonna get it back to pink very easily if you're trying to go over a dark blue. 
So you can layer, but it does, the color is affected by what's underneath because it's not really dry. I mean, think wet into wet blending with or painting with oil paint. What's under is still wet as you're working. And this isn't something where, oh, just let it dry overnight and then you can do your next layer. I've not really found that to be the case. I'm gonna take the other blue too and see how much you can really see. Actually, I'll compare the two so you can see how much just in that, how much I'm using it. So I don't, especially with the more, the, not, the higher end pastels or oil pastels, I don't think it's a super inexpensive medium. And you can get these open stock. I bought mine from Blick and they have, uh, Blick.com and they have all the different colors you can buy individually. I actually went back and bought a few white when I realized how fast I was going through this. Now, much like colored pencil, I wanna make sure I have a decent amount of pigment on the paper so that when I go through and start blending with OMS, it has something to work with. And you can really see how grainy and gritty this is. That will affect that end result too, like because I'm not pushing down hard. Now you can, one of the methods you can do with these is just to push really hard and just grind that pigment into the paper. Mine will be a little bit blotchier in them because I'm not going to do that because I'm not burning through my pastels that fast and I don't think, I don't dislike the look of where it's kind of blotchy. I think it's just one of those looks with pastels that I like or oil pastels. So I'm using a lighter hand as I put this in down. So for blending this, I am taking an old, it's very frayed. I think you can see there how frayed that is. And I'm gonna go over that with OMS. So I'm taking some OMS and I'm just gonna go right around there. And you can use a decent amount of OMS to blend this. I don't mind if this smudges some into the moon, but if I filled it all the way in with the blue now, before I put the white in, the blue is going to be very hard to cover with the white, like to get it light enough. I probably could use a larger brush for this, but whatever. You can see I'm really grinding that in there, really spreading that around. And anywhere where I push a little bit harder, where the pigment, like you can see the pigment, like the dark spots in here, any of those, where's the easel or the thing? Any of those spots are, oh, that is really sketchy, um, are darker. Like they're not as solid in there. It's catching the tooth of the paper and it's, it's almost like stickier. And I will do two layers on the sky, letting it dry in between. So I'll do this layer and then we'll um, do the pink layer, blend that out. And then I'll do, while the pink dries, I will do another layer here. And that'll give me the coverage that I want. Yeah, a few of these areas I can see, I really didn't go as dark as I probably could have, like here. And so by doing the second layer, that allows me to smooth it out where I didn't have it quite what I wanted. This is super messy, but no worries. I definitely could have put a lot more pigment on there before blending this time out through. And very much like colored pencil, the further you get in, the more layers you have, the less and less OMS you wanna use because it starts to smudge too much. But on these base layers, you can use a whole lot. 
Now see the messiness? This area here is much smoother than up here. I just didn't have enough pigment up here. It's as simple as that. If I, I, and it looked like to me like I did, but obviously I did not. It doesn't ruin anything. It's no big deal. It's just going to take another layer, which I was already planning on doing anyway, but I need to really make sure I get that in there heavier, which makes sense because I decided to tint some of the blue down here with that second coat. So that, make, that is why this one is so much darker. Let's go ahead and get a base of the pink. And this color that I'm using here is coral. Oh, that's actually the color I was calling it in the Patreon video. That's unusual. I never get the color right. I suspect this is going to be a color I need to buy backups of or extra of. I think it's, it's just a nice color that I would use for a lot of things. And I'm just working that lightly in circles there. Now, I don't mind if some of that blue, you can see I'm overlapping it, it will start picking up blue on the pastel. That's fine. See how it's smudged in here. I would need to be pulling other colors in here regardless, so it's no big deal. But let's say I don't want that to smudge, just wipe it off on the paper towel. You just clean it off in between colors when you've blended two together. Let me know how many of you guys use oil pastels and what brands do you use? I almost feel like when I use oil painting with a palette knife because you go through it so quick, these lay down fast. And I think that's part of it too. They lay down very fast. So let's say I was working in colored pencil. I would have to do enough layers that I would still use this much product. It just feels like I'm going through it so fast because I'm working big, but because I'm layering it down or laying it down so fast, it feels like I almost like I'm, I don't want to say wasting because you're never really wasting your supplies, but it does feel like you're burning through it very quickly, but I'm covering so much so quickly, I think is, is more of the thing there. Let me show you by pulling this over here. This usually has better. Yeah, you can see there's where my color is at right now. So it's pretty dark in there. This looks like a kid's drawing right now. I promise we're going somewhere with this. So let's start laying that in there. I just want to get some variation. Now be careful, don't just do this. Don't, we're not just scribbling. I want to get these clumps and start building the shapes of these clouds. If you just scribble back and forth, that doesn't give you the shape that you're, you're trying to achieve here. And right now, this is going to look very ugly in your beginning stages. Don't let that frustrate you. I'm gonna let this go over the blue a little too. Don't let that discourage you or frustrate you. It's gonna be so, once you start adding your white highlights, which I do last on, the, on this type with the clouds, it looks so good. It is the most satisfying thing. And see how I'm just starting to build up those shapes. Again, not sketching, not, not scribbles. Whatever I put down is going to mix in a bit with whatever is under it. So you want to keep that in mind when you're choosing your colors. So I'm putting it over a lighter color. So this is not going to be as dark as it is straight out of the stick. And I'll wait to pull this over the blues more till I get the blues finished up. And let's get some of these darker purples in there. Oh, that is a pretty, it's really bright, but that is a pretty color. I'll have to mix that in with the gray though to tone it down or some of the blue probably. I don't want it. It's pretty, but it's probably a little too purple. Okay, we're gonna pull this color. This one is Violet Ochre. Just a really pretty, this is another color I think I'm gonna go through quite a bit. I'm gonna wanna order more because it's just that really pretty grayish, um, grayish like purple color. Now I'm getting this on so thick in some of these places. Those are the areas that are gonna blend really smooth. So if you want it more smooth, put more color. I mean, if I don't know if you can really see, but if we go in here, you can see all these dots. 
those dots, even with the OMS blending in, you're going to really see that, that, that will um, show up quite a bit. So I'm gonna get some more pigment in there. So I'm gonna go back over this with more pink to make this a bit more solid than what I've got. And see, I'm being messy. I don't care if I smudge over the purple, over the rose color. Just wanna get that color in there. And this is gonna be such a great medium. I really can't wait to do portraits with it. This will be so much fun to work with that way. Now, this has a ton of blue on it because of blending this. So I'm going to use my OMS and just rub that in circles until that comes off clean. OMS is a brush cleaner, so you don't have to use anything else to clean your brush. You're just gonna rub that on your paper towel with the OMS. So now I'm gonna go ahead and go through and smooth this out and see how much smoother that is. I put so much more pigment on it this time. Now I'm smudging in between the blue and the pink, which means I'm pulling blue up. So I'm gonna rinse that brush, wipe it on my paper towel, clean that up a bit. And I'm just moving that brush in circles. And this brush, it's a synthetic hog hair uh, filbert, but it's really frayed. It's damaged from painting. You can see how it's all messed up. It's perfect for this. It's a very rough surface. Now, another thing you can do is to take your paper towel you can dip that in a bit of OMS. So there's a little on there and you can blend that way as well. And they're very similar, the end result between the two. The brush is just a little, I found it to be a little easier just cause I didn't have to touch the paper towel. We're gonna leave that to dry. Now, one thing I did find with colored pencil, you do not wanna work over an area that is wet from like if it, you had blended with OMS, you don't wanna put the pencil on top, it damages the tooth of the paper. Didn't really find that to be too big of an issue with this um, because it's so soft. You're not, I didn't find that I was hurting the paper at all by going over it with color. Some of the colors stick better than others, but that's still wet and I can add more right now. So it doesn't seem to follow that same don't work over the paper while it's wet, wet rule. Okay, so we're gonna leave that to dry. We can get the moon in too. I can blend that all together. So let's take white and I'm just gonna put a layer of the white with the moon. And when I go over it with the blue, that'll give me that nice light blue color and then I'll go over it with the white again. So a little bit of a layering process there. This will keep me from going too dark. And then I'm gonna have clouds. We'll have to poof up over that some. So let's go ahead and get some more color down. And so again, this is another area. The paper's mostly dry. It may not be dry all the way. It's fine. As long as I'm close, you know, it's going over it just fine. It's actually sticking weird with this color. So maybe it is still really wet right there. So one of the things I did when I was playing with this before, I was using my hair dryer to dry the OMS. OMS is flammable. So normally I would say don't ever do that. But in this case, because the, um, my hair dryer is really weak, I know that the flash point is, I wanna say it's about 120 degrees. It's 120 or 140. I think I'm, we'll, we'll, I go with 120 to be safe. My hair dryer is not getting close to that because it's not that good. So I could kind of safely do it, but I don't like to do it in video because I have no idea what your hair dryer heats up to. And I had one that used to heat up high enough. I'm pretty sure it would have started a fire. So those are just things you want to keep in mind. So let me put a little bit more with the dark. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of black into this as well to darken it up. So this is with the indigo. Just 
want to get good color in there. See, I'm really getting pigment in there this time. And let's grab a black. I'm gonna go around the edges a little bit. Okay, let's blend that. So I'm gonna clean the OMS off the brush or the pink off the brush again. We'll go ahead and start blending this out. Now this time, I'm gonna let this blend in with my, my moon so that it'll stain the color. I'm just gonna pull that right in. And if it's blotchy, great. That gives me detail of the moon. I do not need it to be perfectly smooth. Let that one be rough. But I do need to wipe the white off now or that is going to blend too much in with the color here. Actually, I could probably pull a little bit of white there and get a cool look. I'm gonna let that white smudge out. I decided I wanted a little bit of glow for the moon there. Now at this point, I've got too much OMS on the brush. See how I'm getting streaky? Then I'm gonna be better off. I'll just smooth some of that out with Let me grab a clean paper towel and I'm using a Viva paper towel. That is really important when you're working with OMS because the OMS does not play nicely with like your bounty or regular kitchen paper towels. These are much more cloth-like. So now where I had strokes I didn't want, I can go ahead and smooth that out. And here, just soften the transition between the pink and the blue. So back with the pigment. Yeah, this paper is wet, so it's extra slippery. Let's see how well the white shows up. Oh, good enough. Okay. See, and this is where I found it to be just so enjoyable. The white shows up so nicely. It is so great for getting those highlights with the cloud. Okay, but I do need to pull pink up over a lot of this. We need that in the background. And I'm gonna blend that with a Q-tip just to soften that out. And I found with oil pastels, get creative with different things you have around your house. An old t-shirt, an old rag, Q-tips. You can scrape bits off for highlights. So let's say I wanna scrape details. See how I can scrape little details for the moon by just using, this is a, what is this, an etching? Where did I, it was something I got in one of my smart art boxes. Engraving tools. It works. You've got a lot of different things that you can do. Now, depending on what you blended, that came back up white because I had white down first. Here, these, not gonna come back up to white because pink was down first, so it doesn't really lighten that much when I scrape here. The only reason that showed much was because white was down first. So if you're gonna do the techniques where you're scraping away details, you just wanna make sure you're planning ahead for what color you want scraping up. So like here, that white, if I scraped, I can expose the pink because the pink is underneath. It's the white that I'm scraping up because it's the top layer. I almost think of it too, uh, more as sculpting in many ways because it goes on thicker and you're just kind of manipulating and moving it around. It's very different than a lot of other mediums that I work in. So I'm gonna start pulling this rose color. Is it actually rose? Madden Lake, pink, pale pink, Madden Lake. That is a really long name. Start pulling some of this up here. I wanna make sure that's going in front of the moon. And I wanna overlap that over the blues as well so it kind of fades out. And see, once you get those base layers, the rest of this goes really fast. I'm 
This down here again gets covered by the mat, so I'm not worried about going, filling that in too solid. And I'm using my reference as just a general guideline. I do not need that to be exact at all. Now here, see how I'm getting a little bit too scribbly. Fill that in a little bit more, more like you're paying attention to what you're doing, which I apparently was not. More deliberately, that's the word I'm looking for, deliberate. And you've got these clumps and clusters in the clouds and that's what I'm doing. And down here we can go a bit more solid to darken this up. Now here's something to be aware of too. Can you see this angle? I don't know if that shows. Can you, um, right there, see that little angle? That's graphite because that's where I put my lines initially, just to let me know where the mat was going to go. It will always show through lighter colors. So be very careful. If you draw things out first with a graphite pencil, it needs to be light because it will show through. These are, it's like they're thick, but they're still very translucent. It, many of the colors are. Some of the darker ones, you really don't see it, but in a light area, that is absolutely something to be aware of. So let's say, what method would I use to get my image on if it was something more detailed, like a portrait? I would, probably use a projector and use one of the oil pastels to sketch it out if I wanted to trace it. Or of course you can freehand it, but you can't do a lot of erasing. The, that is definitely not, I'm not a huge fan of graphite, just regular graphite lines. Now I am going to use for my shadows, the same, the darker areas, I'm gonna go with the blue from the sky because that makes way more sense than pulling in a random purple. So I have to be careful when I blend this though, because it is going to get dark, like really dark. Just a few little areas. I'm gonna go over that with that gray. gives me a little bit more of a neutral dark there. I wanna get this dark enough because when I come over it with the white, that's what makes such a difference. Okay, let's blend this out. I may not need OMS. Let's try with just the paper. This is just the dry uh, Viva paper towel. That is really giving me a nice effect. See how it just tints it? it well, it doesn't show that much for you guys on that camera. Unfortunately, let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let's see if we can get the lighting right. You can kind of see where it's just starting to tint that color. These colors, my camera is not liking tonight. I apologize for that. Some of, they're really, it looks so pretty in person and you can barely see that there. That just isn't, these colors are not looking the same. They look so much better in person. That's no fun. I'm just going in little circles here. Now, anywhere where I blend with that blue, I wanna make sure I switch the paper towel. If I just start blending over the light pink, I'm gonna end up with that dark blue all over. And this is giving me such a nice soft look between the pink, much more so than that bright purple was going to do. And I'm leaving areas, see how it gets a little bit lighter? Get You want that variation in here. Now I've gone to a cleaner side of the paper towel so I can blend out 
the coral color or the pink matter light lake something or another. The name that's way too long. Now let's, I can do the stars and look how well the white shows up for stars. Just make sure that they are grouped and clustered together. Do not put random polka dots everywhere. You wanna make sure that they are grouped and some are bigger than others. Variation is such a big deal. This is why when I paint, I prefer splattering it because you get more variation. It's too easy. You make a couple of dots and you're like, oh, that, that looks great. And then all of the dots end up looking the same. Stars. So some of these I'm just lighter. And I can also blend these out. You don't have to leave them that harsh. So if you want to soften it, just little, little dabs, push them back. But it is just such a big deal that when you do stars, you get variation in clumps, like clusters of them, not clumps. Some are spread out, some are grouped together. Soften a few of these. Okay, now let's start pulling these whites in here. And I'm probably done with the LMS. I don't think I will need it for anything else. Now, the important thing is to let that pink show through. Don't try to cover it completely. I wanna pull that over the moon as well. And see now, because we did those darks, the light that we pull in really shows up nicely. Now watch that you don't just do one weird long worm thing in there. Break these up. We have a lot of white in here. I am pushing a bit harder with this. Pull some of these darker colors in now, in between the white areas. They know I want to be a lot darker. Right now, everything's just a bit too light. More of that blue in there. We'll darken that up. And you just keep building and layering and building. And then if I want to blend it out, I'm going to use the paper towel again. Actually, I could use that or the Q-tip will work well for the smaller areas. Yeah. Paper towel is easier. I just roll it up so it's the size I want. Now you can use blending tools, the blending stumps that I use often for graphite. I've got some over here, these guys. But you they're better for tiny um, sharp edges, these things. They're harder to get a soft look with. So where I want it to be softer, that's why I've switched, I'm using paper towels instead of something like those that are better for like sharp, clean edges. And see how I'm blending the blue areas again first so I can get a clean edge where I want to work more with the pinks. I need a darker color in here. Let's give it a 
little bit of red. Mm, that's not really layering that well. Maybe purple would be better. Let's find out. That purple? Nope, not that one. I think I used that. Yeah, this one's more of a lavender color. Cobalt violet light. I'm going to pull a little bit of that violet color into the moon, too. Because if I'm going to pull into one area, I need to put it in a couple of other spots. Now, when I go to the white, I'm not going to blend that too much because I really want this to sand out. I just want to soften it a bit. Just lightly dragging across that. I'm definitely adding more pressure with the white now. And this is the look that I personally love that roughness with the oil pastels, that kind of chunky look. So I don't want to over blend. I mean, you can smooth it out as much as you want, but personally, I like, really like that more rough feel to them. At least on these final layers. The initial layers, not so much. The initial layers I definitely like to be softer, um, but when I get into these top layers with the white, I really want that texture to show. But the reason that it looks good is because I've already got so many layers underneath, it's almost going on smooth. Your first layer with the oil pastels, when you go on top with the paper going across the dry, it doesn't look as smooth as this. This, you get that more wet into wet blending look. And I think that's one of the things, at least for me, that I have to watch because I do like that slightly rough look. I want to stop, don't, don't just keep blending. It's so easy to keep blending. Stop, look at it, and then come back and add more if you need to. And a lot of what I'm doing here too, I've got so much pigment on the paper already. Like as I'm adding the white, it's not gonna make it completely white. It's just going to lighten what's underneath. If I wanted to go to completely white, I need to lift some of that off. So scraping is the easiest way to, if you've got like a flat, a razor blade would be too sharp. I wouldn't wanna scrape the paper, but like a card, something like this, just a piece of cardboard, I could scrape an area that I need to lighten up. If, I, if it's got too much pigment, scrape some of that and then put the white on. Now the white's gonna be brighter, it'll show up better. Oh, I love this. This, always, this is the stage that I always get excited with when working with them. I love this rough look that you get in here. It, that textured look. I'm hitting the tops of these clouds, making them a lot brighter. Now an area like this that's going over the blue, I am gonna soften that out so it's more in the distance. Just using that Q-tip. I think those of you outside of the US call them cotton swabs. I'm just going to soften some of this out. Mostly the bottom edge. I want the upper edge of these details to stay harsh. And I'm just pulling that shadow down into the cloud. And this would be how I would work in any medium where I'll get that sharper edge on the top and just when I blend it, blend it down, but leave that upper edge harsh. I'm just pulling that down. I'm just wadding this up to create a soft blending thing. 
blending thing, technical turn. Now let's see really quick. I'm curious, because now I'm pulling this down, I'm not seeing as easily where the mat would fit on this. Let's take a look. How much of that gets blocked? Okay, so all of this down here really is not showing, which means I want to pull some more pink into this one. Because that is still showing. And see what happens, I don't know, can you see in this? You can see bits of the previous layer showing through. I'm not trying to cover it. I want to make sure I get that variation of color. That's just why, this is why we wanted to build that up the way we did. Let's actually let that set for a moment. I want to come up here and start adding some detail around the moon. Pull some of those lights in. Now you can do even more detail too with colored pencil. Depending on how thick you have that on will impact how well it sticks. Now this would be a good one to use the Q-tip to go ahead and soften some of those edges. The joint drawing doesn't actually stick that well to these, but I can still use it to clean that edge up a bit. This is just my regular wax-based colored pencil. Not shaped right, so let's go around that with the blue and then I'll be able to blend that out. Losing my shape there. Now I'm going to pull this blue out into the sky, let that fade out. And then, if I wanted to rest my hand on this, like I've always, I would just use a piece of glassine. If I need that extra stability, you could also use a mull stick. If I rest my hand on that, I will end up with pigment all over my hands, which can get quite messy. We can take some of the blue and darken a few little bits in here. You don't want to go too crazy with it. And then I'm going to smudge that again. So you definitely do not always need OMS. I find it much easier for those beginning layers, but at this point, if I used it, I have enough pigment on here. I would need to be very, very careful not to overdo it. And I'm just gonna lightly soften some of this in the moon. Again, if I want sharper details, I can come through and scrape some of that off. Those are probably a bit too sharp there. It's a very forgiving medium and that like right there, I was like, ah, too sharp, just soften it back. Just go back over it, no big deal. Let me show you really quick what this is looking like. Let's see if it looks better here. That is so different than what you guys are seeing. So there we go. That is much closer. All of this again gets cut off by the mat. And see, a lot of this is not, it's just blending at this point on its own because there's so much pretty pigment on there. 
So I don't even need to go over it with anything, not even a Q-tip. This area I do need to soften though, just over the sky there. Just taking more of this pink color back over the, some of those darks. I don't want to over blend. I'm just dabbing a little bit where I just want it a teeny bit softer. I want to keep that roughness in there. These areas I will blend where I want it to be soft. We are just about done. Got the shape in there. Oh yeah, much better. This is white white. It looks light blue to you right now. What I'm doing is completely like straight white. Can you tell I'm frustrated with the cameras not like not being able to capture this accurately? Because it doesn't look it looks so good in person. But not here, unfortunately. Soften just a bit. Don't want to over blend. Do you want to pull a little bit more blue back in a couple spots? But this medium is really fun to work in, just the way that it layers and blends and how you can build up this texture. Clouds are especially fun. I would say great for your first project if you've never worked in oil pastels before because they always look like clouds. Barb said, are you able to get really fine details with these, for example, if you're doing animal portraits? So yes, you can. There's different techniques you can use, like the scraping off I was showing on the moon at one point. I could get in finer details by scraping. Can you see where, oh, kinda, it's so tiny. I'm, that's what I just scraped right there, that little Y shape. You can get little details if you pay attention to scraping things out. Another method that you can do is colored pencils. Wax-based colored pencils generally stick better if you're using a harder oil-based pencil, you're more scraping the, the pigment off. But you can take, like I had used my, this one is actually too soft, I don't like the one drawing for this, but the Caran d'Ache Luminance are gonna work better. You can use that and put in fine detail. So if I'm doing a portrait, I'm gonna be using a lot of colored, I shouldn't say a lot, I'm gonna use some colored pencil to clean up edges. Now, I my goal with oil pastels, I'm not looking to create work that is as detailed and refined as colored pencil. I want that more painterly, that looser style. That's my goal when I work with oil pastels. You can also use stencils. So I could rip out an, a piece of paper in the shape I want and get a crisp edge that way. But that all I feel like you're putting it, depending on how much of that detail you're trying to get, let's say you're trying to get every line in pet fur and dog fur, I'm gonna put down my, my base color, I'm gonna put a color on top, and I'm gonna come back through to get the details by scraping up and exposing that color underneath. So it's almost like you're doing a scratch board type art to get some of that detail, but it works very, very well with this medium because you, you do layer it so thick, thick. You just have to plan that first because you need to know what color you're gonna expose when you, you scrape it off. Francisco said, hi Lisa, I've heard that it is recommended to wear gloves with oil pastel, is it a myth? No, actually, if you're gonna be using, like I don't have it on my hands because I'm not touching it, I'm touching the outside edge. But if you're going to be smudging with your fingers, yeah, gloves is definitely a good idea because some of the pigments, now I don't know, I have not checked with this brand, but I know some pigments and some brands, they're still using like zinc and different pigments that you wouldn't want. So like if you had to cut on your hand, that might 
be problematic. So yes, if you're going to be making being very messy, absolutely. In my case, I'm touching mainly other materials to blend, but if I were going to be doing a lot of blending with my fingers, I would definitely be wearing gloves. And there should be toxicity information because it's required by law to, in order to sell here in the US anyway. So if you go to Blix website, I think each color should have its toxicity information. They may on the, the website of the company itself, but I think Blick had that information available. Angela said, so how long does it take for an oil pastel work to dry and does it need to be varnished? Mine that I use, it may depend on the brand, but at least in my experience years ago, they never really dried, but I never used a varnish so or a fixative. So this one, the fixative that's by that brand, it hardened it so much. I couldn't believe the difference. Now I'm not going to, I don't know if it'll work for every brand of, of oil pastel. I would definitely do a small sample because sometimes I know with colored pencils, some fixatives don't play with nicely with certain brands of pencil. People have posted photos of things going horribly wrong. So I, I've tested now with this one, the one that I did, the small one, and you can see like I'm touching it, nothing's coming up on my fingers. This fixative is amazing for these pastels, but again, I've not tried them on anything else, so I don't know. If I w wasn't going to use a fixative, I would get it framed behind glass as soon as possible so that it doesn't get damaged. I mean, anytime any of this should be framed behind glass, but I... I would be more concerned if it didn't have that fixative on it. Tasha said, would you say layering with pastels is more like layering with acrylic or more like layering with watercolor, or perhaps more like colored pencil? I'd say more like oil pa paintings. I think if you were working wet into wet because the previous layer is not really dry. So, I mean, as I'm layering blue on top of more blue and then I put white on top of all of that, the previous layers of blue are mixing in with that white. So it's, I would say it's closest to oil painting the way that you layer what would essentially be wet into wet. What would the technique be for using oil pastels with chalk pastel? Is it even possible? I don't know. I'm not going to say it's not possible because lots of things are possible. I, you would have to put the chalk down first. Chalk, not really going to stick on top of the oil pastels, but I don't know why you would. Like I can't see, I can't think of a time where that would be beneficial as a mixed medium. Like some mixed medias make sense. Like watercolor first and then colored pencil on top makes sense. You save so much time, you get great results. But in this case, I don't see where it makes sense to do one over the other. And then you run into the problem of which fixative to use. This fixative is specifically for oil pastels. So that would not be a, I wouldn't mix that myself with soft pastels. Do they have light fast ratings? They do. And these ones were all, they, so this, I contacted the company about this and I haven't heard back, but it probably went to my spam folder like everything else. So I'm going to contact them through social media. But I asked them, what do those stars mean? I couldn't find any information on that. They used like a three star rating and these all have high ratings, but I don't know what that means as far as blue wool or ASTM and I've not heard back from the company and then I jumped, I like was just too excited. I was going to wait until I heard back, but I got excited. I was like, ah, screw it. I'm just going to order it. I don't know what those three stars mean as far as blue wool or ASTM. So I'm going to have to find that out. Can we use zest it for oil pastels? Um, I would assume so. I never have, but it should work fine. Ellen said, is it necessary to use oil pastel paper or can I just use medium to rough watercolor or other papers instead? So I would not use medium to rough. I would go with a smoother surface. So if I was going to use watercolor paper, I would use like the Arches Hot Press 140 pound watercolor paper. Smooth, I like better. I don't, you could go with rough, but you're going to get a really bumpy end result. So I guess it depends on what your goals are. You could get kind of cool results with that, but most of the time, most people are going to go with a smoother surface. So a hot press watercolor paper is better than your rough. It's just that I want a thicker cardstock because it's got to be able to handle me sliding and moving it around and pushing kind of hard. You, it also, I want it to be able to handle OMS. So I, I don't want something super thin. Now, something that would be kind of similar to this paper, I have a mixed media paper that's something cheap. I don't even know where I got it. It was something that was mixed media that was cheaper and it was very similar to this. Not exact, but close enough that I would be comfortable working on it. I just want that heavier weight. From Francisco, hi, any tips on how to keep your oil pastel clean? When I layer them, they get very dirty. So it just takes planning and, and te maybe test on a scratch piece of paper because some colors as you layer, like as we work through this one, I have to know that the colors I put in here aren't going to create mud as I layer them. Like, I don't want to use black to do the shadow. I would, well, in this case, I would get gray and that would 
be okay for this piece. But I normally, let's say I had yellows in here. I don't want to use black near it because that is going to smudge and create a muddy mess. Those colors, if I'm working in oil pastels, I have to be so careful not to smudge those into each other because black and yellow mixing together is not cute. Same thing with oranges. I don't like black with oranges mixing in. But like here, any of these colors can kind of smudge and you'll be okay. So it depends on what you're you're doing. But yeah, you have to you have to be aware of things like that. This isn't a medium like with coat with acrylics, for example. I can decide I'm gonna do some spacing and like, okay, I'm gonna paint the background and then let's say for this one, I'm gonna paint the background and then I want an orca swimming through here. I am not gonna do it in that way with oil pastels. I'm gonna do I'm gonna pre-draw out the orca and work around it. Because if I try to layer the blacks and get the blues and everything over this, I'm gonna, these are gonna start smudging a lot. Now, one thing that you can do is take something that is a bit harder, like here's kind of a, a cardboard piece, or a, it was a tag off something. It's thicker than, it's thicker than normal paper. I could scrape an area off lift some of that color and then lay new color down over it if I was starting to create a horrible muddy mess. But this is essentially like working wet into wet with oil paints where the layers aren't drying in between. So you've got to plan what is able to mix with another or do you need to stop and scrape? You could use a palette knife to scrape things off. That would actually, that makes more sense. Um, but you can use a, and I would use a metal one, not a plastic one. I don't like how rounded the plastic ones are for this, but a palette knife and scrape an area off and rework it. But there definitely needs to be a decent amount of planning going in before you ever start the project. Otherwise, things start, you're gonna get mud. If you were like, I randomly changed my mind and now I want a bird flying through here. Well, if you didn't plan for that, you're trying to fill a bird in, part of it's over like this, the area in the background here. This is not on real heavy, so the bird's gonna show up better. This is on thick and heavy. I don't even wanna touch it because it would come off of my finger right now before I varnish it. Um, but. If I was trying to do a bird, let's say a sparrow or something, and his wing is over here, it's not gonna look the same on this side. I need to plan that out beforehand. I would have needed to draw the sparrow out separately before jumping in to layer on top of layer on top of layer. You are limited with this on how you're going to layer because those previous layers are still wet and they're going to reactivate. So scraping off an area can work, but you need you definitely, it's better to plan out a lot when you're working with oil pastels. And then as far as the, in case this is what you meant, the oil pastel themselves, if you mean the actual stick, I can see this one, I don't know if you can see, it's got, oh, it's shiny because it's hard to tell, it's got pink on it. All I would do is take paper towel and wipe that off. And now it's clean. So as far as the stick itself to clean, just wipe it off on my paper towel. Then the artwork's a much more complicated process. Hey, you, yes you, I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my God, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery.